Close your eyes. Take a couple of good long deep in and out breaths. Notice where you feel the breathing in the body. Bring your attention there. So you know, now the breath is coming in, now the breath is going out. And ask yourself if it's comfortable. If it is, keep it up. Load the long breathing. If it's not comfortable, you can change. Try it more shallow, shorter, or in long, out short, in short, out long. Heavy, light. See what kind of breathing feels best for you right now. Because you want to give the mind a good place to stay inside, where it can work on its good qualities. Because these are our protection. Our lives are shaped by our actions, and our actions, of course, are shaped by the state of our minds. And so you want to make sure your mind is always in a good shape. Now, if your mind is dependent on things outside being a certain way, you're really in danger. Because things outside are not always going to be good. You come from the monastery and you want to get a blessing, and may everything be fine, everything be well. Well, we know not everything is going to be well. But we'll make sure that our minds are always well. And that means they can't depend on things outside. The mind needs to learn how to create its own protection, create its own inner strength. It's like here at the monastery, we have our own electric, electric system. It's not dependent on the electric system outside. So when the power goes down outside, we still have power. We get it from the sun. It's the same way. You want to be able to get some power from inside your mind, no matter what is happening outside. And you can get that from your intentions. You intend to keep the mind in good shape. You intend to act in ways that are totally harmless, because you know if you harm other people, that harm is going to come back to you. In fact, that's the big danger in our lives. We think of dangers outside. They're nothing compared to the dangers that lie waiting in our own minds, if we're not careful. If we are careful, there are a lot of good things in our minds that can overcome those dangers. That's why we meditate. That's why meditation is such an important thing to do every day. Because the potential for greed is always there, the potential for anger and delusion, they're always there. So you always have to be on guard. And you have to replace them with good qualities. And we do that through g generosity, we have to do that through observing the precepts, but especially through meditating. So this is your protection. As the Buddha said, the Dharma protects those who practice it. And the protection it gives is nothing magical, simply that if you actually follow the Dharma, you're not going to be doing anything unskillful, anything harmful. And when you don't do harmful things, what kind of harm is going to come back at you? You may have some bad karma from the past, but if your mind is well trained, then when the bad results of that bad karma come, they don't have to overcome the mind. So to protect yourself both from present moment unskillfulness and from past unskillfulness. You've got to work on keeping your mind skillful here at all times, and to make it easier, and make it comfortable. So it's, the present moment is a good place to stay. You're not tempted to go running off. Now we have, the, the Buddha has you protected on all sides. They say that one of the duties of a teacher is to provide protection for the student in all directions. That's not the case that the Buddha is going to go running around with a sword and a shield to protect you. But he does give you advice on how to protect yourself. And that kind of protection stays with you always.